Joseph lightly pushed the blade of his hand plane across the piece of cypress on his workbench. A long, thin piece of wood curled up on top of the plane and fell to join the pile of wood chips on the floor. He picked up the cypress piece, held it at eye level to examine it, then blew a fine coat of wood dust from the surface. Slowly, gently, he ran a calloused hand across the carefully crafted piece. It was a wall shelf, one of the finishing touches for his near-complete home with Mary, a home he no longer needed. Joseph set down the shelf, braced his hands on the workbench, and closed his eyes, trying and failing to absorb the morning's shocking news. Mary, his betrothed wife, was pregnant. It would have been a scandalous enough if the baby had been his, but it wasn't. He had no idea who the father was. Joseph began to pace angrily back and forth across the room between the shelves piled high with tools on one side and a row of projects neatly stacked against the opposite wall of his carpentry shop. Mary was from a devout family just like his. He had known her since they were children. She was honest, courageous, and strong, and Mary is smart. She knew the consequences of adultery for both her and her family. They would be ostracized and shamed. The Sanhedrin would order Mary's head shaved as a sign of her disgrace. She might even be stoned to death. As much as he tried, Joseph could not reconcile the girl he knew and loved with the devastating news she had given him that morning with her grief-stricken father at her side. Three words. It had only taken three words to break his heart and leave his future in ashes. Joseph, I'm pregnant. Now, instead of planning a wedding feast, Joseph would begin the painful process of planning a divorce. Although Mary had yet to leave her father's home to live with him, the betrothal process legally bound them as husband and wife. Of course, Joseph could not go forward with the marriage. If he did not divorce Mary, everyone would assume the baby was his. Her sexual immorality would become his scandal, as well, in the eyes of their community. Joseph stood in the open doorway and looked across the street where a group of children chased each other beneath the shade of a tall sycamore fig tree. He, Mary, their cousins and friends had all played beneath that tree as children. He had always assumed their children would play there too. He sighed, closed his eyes again, and saw Mary's face as she gave him the news of her pregnancy. Her eyes were wide with fear and brimming with tears. Her face was pale with exhaustion. He imagined her, so young and vulnerable, facing the shame of a public divorce, and slowly his anger began to subside. There would be nowhere for her to hide in their small town. A scribe would march through the narrow streets and loudly announce the divorce and her sin of adultery for all to hear. Joseph then remembered the words of the Lord as proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah. They were a gift from the long hours he spent memorizing the Torah as a boy at his rabbi's feet. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. Joseph walked over to an oil lamp neatly tucked into a niche in the wall. The clay lamp was in the shape of a shallow bowl with a delicate spout molded into the rim. An oil-soaked wick trailed over the edge. On a nearby table, a sharpened reed rested against the small pot of ink. Both the wick and the reed were symbols of Isaiah's prophecy. If the wick began to smolder, Joseph knew he would need to snuff it out before it became a fire hazard. If the reed became bruised and therefore useless for writing, he would snap it in two and toss it into the fire and get another one. Anyone would. Anyone but God. This was Isaiah's message in the metaphor. God is outrageously, unreasonably merciful. His definition of justice is not one of crime and punishment. It is to show mercy to the wounded, the vulnerable, and the exhausted. Joseph picked up a broom leaning against the door frame and swept the shavings outside. Then he locked the door and began his walk home. His heart was still heavy, but now his mind was clear. He would divorce Mary quietly. He would not subject her and her family to the scorn of their community. More importantly, Joseph would do everything in his power to save the life of Mary and her unborn child. That evening, when the lamp was extinguished, Joseph sank into the comfort of his sleeping mat. His body and his heart were weary. Silent tears slipped down his cheeks as he mourned for Mary. Gradually, he drifted off to sleep to the comforting rhythm of his parents' breathing and the rustle of the animals in the manger beneath the main room of his home. As Joseph slept, an angel of the Lord came to him in his dreams. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. At dawn, the sun streamed through the narrow windows at the top of the wall, and Joseph sat up on his mat. Last night's grief had been swept away by the angel's message, making a new space for joy. It was a new day, and Joseph had a new purpose. It was time to bring his wife home. Water dripped from Joseph's freshly washed hair onto the shoulders of his best tunic. It was early evening as he glanced around the torchlit yard of his family compound, where tables were piled high with food. 
A long row of amphora filled with wine lined one of the rock walls. His groomsmen gathered around him and began to clap and sing. Joseph smiled and then led the way out through the gate and down the street. The wedding party arrived at Mary's home just as the first stars pierced the night sky. Her father was waiting for them at the gate, his eyes filled with joyful tears. I'm here to take my wife home, Joseph said to his father-in-law. Mary's father stepped aside to allow his daughter to step forward and take Joseph's hand. Mary's head was covered with the bridal veil, showing a hint of her long, dark, loose hair. Hand in hand, the couple walked to Joseph's home. The singing groomsmen, now accompanied by Mary's family, followed. As the wedding party made their way through the streets of Nazareth, the procession grew as neighbors rushed from their homes, lamps and flowers in their hands, to join the celebration. When Mary and Joseph entered the gate of his family compound, they found it filled with more of their friends, neighbors, and large extended families. The crowd shouted and joyed the sight of the couple and then fell silent in expectation as the rabbi stepped forward to address Joseph. Take her according to the law of Moses and of Israel, he said. At that, the groomsmen stepped forward to place a crown of flowers on both bride and groom. Mary and Joseph were then led to a lamp-lit table where they each signed their names to the ketubah. At last, the groomsmen led the couple to a quiet corner of the compound where Joseph had built their home. Then the couple was left to spend some time alone while their friends and families began the week-long wedding feast. Once the front door was securely closed behind them, Joseph lifted Mary's veil and took her into his arms. After a moment, the couple parted. Joseph smiled at his bride and handed her the ketubah. Mary blinked back joyful tears as she turned to look around her new home for the perfect place to keep the precious documents secure. At last, her eyes rested on a wall shelf, carefully crafted from cypress wood. She crossed the room to it and tenderly ran her fingers across the smooth surface. For a moment, she looked down at the ketubah in her hand, filled with Joseph's promises to her. He would provide for her, protect her, and care for her. He promised to treat her with dignity always. Mary closed her eyes and whispered a prayer of thanksgiving as tears slipped past her thick lashes and spilled down her cheeks. Then she opened her eyes, took a deep breath, and placed the ketubah on the shelf Joseph made. She was home. Father, you give mercy to the wounded and grace to the exhausted. You shelter the vulnerable and defend the weak. When my heart is broken and I feel lost and alone, draw me near. Whisper sweet truth over me and silence my fears. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Amen.